Bandsaw blade tracking issues. Hi, I'm Guy the Tool Guy. I've been in customer service for woodworking machinery for many years. One of the biggest questions I get asked is about people having bandsaw blade tracking problems. A lot of times, think it's a big deal, something's wrong with the machine. Really and truthfully, bandsaw blade tracking is very simple and many times made a lot more complicated than it needs to be. Today I'm going to show you the quick, easy way to do bandsaw blade tracking. Need a tape measure, a micrometer, square, a good quality straight edge or level will do, some assorted wrenches, electrical tape. Actually, we don't need any of this. For this particular model, we don't even need a screwdriver and a wrench. Okay, we're going to get started. Blade tracking problems. Your blades came off. First thing you need to do is unplug the power. Next thing everybody wants to do is put the blade on. You're not quite ready for that yet. Go ahead and remove your throat plate, get it out of the way. Then you're going to remove your side bearings completely out of the way and your th rear thrust bearing. Make sure they are completely out of the way. Nothing touching. Repeat the same thing at the bottom. So now it's just you, the band cell blade, and the top and bottom wheels. You have no bearings involved in this. Then the next thing you're going to do is release your tension. Some of you have quick tension. So older ones have adjustable tension. However you need to do it, release it. And reset your blade as close to center of the wheel as you can possibly get it. Then we're going to reset the tension. Now, if you just spin it right now, it's probably going to come right back off again. What you want to do is when you have your blade as close to center as possible is spin it a little bit. In the back you will see the adjustment. Just slowly spin it. Work your back, back adjustment until it spins toward the center. I know you're going to see a lot of things if you open the manual up about coplanar and levels and straight edges. That really 99.9% .9 of the time has nothing to do with it. Your two bandsaw wheels, top and bottom. If they are a little bit off, front to back, means nothing. If they're a little off this way, this way, it means nothing. Don't even worry yourself with that. What you want to do is take what you have, put the band in the middle, just like a hula hoop. You put a hula hoop around your waist, you start to get it spinning. It doesn't have to be pretty, but what you really want to do is just get it to stay on. And that's all we're doing here today, and that's all you ever really have to do. So, you get it spinning, you make a few minor adjustments, you go ahead and it looks like it's spinning very well. It's not on the bearings. Then we're going to plug it in and turn it back on. Go ahead and close your doors and turn it on. It's tracked. Simple as that. Go ahead and turn it off and then we'll go to the next step, the bearings. A okay, first step first step is to move your side bearings over the body of your bandsaw blade. Trick is you want to have as much of the bearing on the blade as possible without getting involved with the teeth. And that looks pretty good, so we're going to go ahead and tighten that up. Next step is to move your rear thrust bearing. You want to get it as close to the blade as possible 
without actually touching. Just bring it to the blade and then back it off just a little bit and then tighten it up. And you check it. That's a little too much. We'll bring it a little closer. That's good. That's about a 32nd of an inch. So that's very good. So now we have the rear thrust bearing adjusted properly and the side bearings adjusted. We need to go adjust the side bearings against the body of the blade from the front. Okay, the next step is to adjust the side bearings against the body of the blade. As you can see, these bearings are typically on a cam. Some band saws are not on a cam, but most of them are. So you want to have them up against the body of the blade without actually touching as close as possible. A couple of thousandths of an inch, uh, paper thickness. Paper is really hard to control. What I like to do is take a piece of electrical tape. The electrical tape, I'm just going to put it on the body of the blade and fold it over and bring it back. I'm going to use that for my thickness gauge. Now, I bring it up to the bearing and I can bring the first bearing, you see, up to the blade. I can actually touch it. Now, you just want to barely touch it. You don't really want to do anything more. If you're touching it like this and pushing it over, you're not doing any good. You want to barely touch the tape. Okay, you're going to have to get a good feel for it. Barely touch it, then tighten it up. Then the other side is going to be a little easier because you can, don't have to be quite so careful because you're just bringing it up to it and you're going to tighten it up. All right, now the tape is actually touching both bearings and they're turning, but whenever you take the tape off, it won't be touching both bearings. So that top bearing set is perfectly adjusted. Now, just move the tape down to the bottom bearing set, and then you're gonna have to repeat everything with your rear thrust bearing, your side bearings against the body, and your side bearings against the body from the front. Repeat that whole process on the bottom. And then you should be able to take your tape off and get to sewing. Okay, I just got finished adjusting the bottom set of bearings, the same procedure as the top, the side bearings and the rear thrust bearing. Now it's time to bring the piece of tape up and time to take the tape off. It's off of there. So I'm gonna plug it back in and I'm going to turn it on. Okay, that seems to be running perfectly. If you look at the side bearings, they're not moving at all. Look at the bottom bearing, nothing's moving. The spacing is perfect, and your bandsaw is done. So now we're going to turn it off, put the throat plate in it, and you're ready to go. All right, and now we need to make sure our blade tension is adjusted properly. A lot of the newer saws have this little gauge, and you can go by that. I don't particularly like them. One good way to check it is right on the inside edge where your blade is. Just put your finger, put the tip of your finger because it hurts a little bit more, and you push. Go ahead and give it a good push, and no more than about a quarter of an inch before it starts hurting, and you can see that's tensioned real good. So. After that, then, ready to move on, and I think your saw is done. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the throat plate in, and it's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and show you something else, how to square your table up to your blade, very easy. Just get you, put your miter gauge in, get you a 2x4, go ahead and turn it on. Make a very, very shallow cut. and stop it. We have a very shallow cut. 
what we're going to do is we're going to wait for the bandsaw blade to stop. Then we're going to reverse the cut. We're going to bring it up to the blade. If that blade fits in that kerf with no problem, that table is perfectly square to the blade. As, as you can see, that table is perfectly square to the blade. If it's off, then you'd have to adjust it a little bit. Front cut, back cut at 180 degrees, only one way for it to go, and that's square. This bandsaw is working fine now. Blade is perfectly tracked. Bandsaw blade tracking is really not that difficult. Actually, it's quite easy. If you find this helpful, go ahead and like this video. Leave comments down below. I'm going to be doing a series of videos on the most common problems people have with woodworking machinery. Also, some first looks, maybe new products, maybe product reviews. If you have interest, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and like my Facebook page. So I'm Guy the Tool Guy, and let me know if I can help.